Hello everyone, uh, this is Pedro again from Pytalista and today I'm gonna give you the basic, probably this basic will be enough for you to do 80, even more than 80% of you need to do on your tests so be very productive and I use PyTest, probably most of people that are coding Python use PyTest to test code I'm talking more about um, more unit tests when you test a function or module in every function to make sure that the behavior of that function is uh, as expected. So PyTest is very easy to use. Uh, most uh, what I use, I use uh, functions. Uh, it's not like the unit test from the standard library that you have to use classes. You have the option to use classes though, but I, I, for, I never need to use classes in, in PyTest. Uh, I always use function. It's much uh, cleaner, simpler. And I'll teach you the basics and how you should structure and run your tests. And if you want to uh, know more about it or uh, know probably a little bit more than 80%, I would sh uh, then what you need, I would recommend to read the book from Brian Ockham, which I will recommend at the end. And I'll also put the link to the book in the description. So let's get started. But before I go any further, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and like the video. You would have like a, a project and it can be, it's a very simple project with only one function here, but you probably would have like a folder where your project is and then you have like all modules. In this case, I have only one module and one function. It's a f simple function that um, I'm calculating the rolling average of uh, values in a list. So I'm not going down to the uh, specific of this function, but it's pretty much it takes a list in a period that I want to do the rolling average and then return another list mm -hmm. with the rolling average. First, um, one thing that you should do, you should have your test in another folder and then you call this folder tests because um, PyTest, when you run it in your root directory, it is try, not try, it looks for a folder where the name is tests and all the inside that folder, every file that has got the word test at the beginning. So if I'm um, testing my project, I usually like to separate into module or put test to test uh, project module, which is that one. Uh, project uh, module.py so that's it so I, I, I already have installed here pytest but to install is just to uh, install pytest that's already installed uh, my pip probably I'll upgrade the pip Uh, just make sure that don't need to but all right so to write your tests you have to just create a function uh, first you have to uh, import the um, uh, your module so you say from my project uh, import project module you're just gonna import that function so and then I'm just gonna uh, you have to call it test, test, and then I don't think you have to call test here, but you usually do. And then what I do is I call test and then I just um, have the function that I'm going to test, which is rolling average. So test rolling average, and then in this case, take no argument. And then what I usually do is I write the result of that function. Uh, equals to and then I import the the function and the signature is a list uh, in this case I'm just gonna 
I'm just gonna copy and paste here uh, one example. So like that. And then I'm just gonna do a three uh, moving average of that list. And then I'm just gonna do a assert result, not return result uh, equals equals. And then that's gonna be that. And to test that, I just come here in the console and then write PyTest. And it doesn't work because um, um, I have to run in a, in a module. So and then it's gonna be, sorry for that, Python M PyTest, and then it's gonna work. So passed, beautiful. So you see that uh, there is a green here, that's one pass and it took zero seconds very quickly. Uh, but sometimes you want to test more than one case. And now I'm going to teach you the thing probably that I use the most. And because what people do usually, um, they sometimes do something like this. Uh, so they can call, I'm just going to, Quickly right here, result one, and then I go here, result one, and then I can call expected um, result one, and then call that, and and do something like that. And then I'm just try to and then expect the results. So it's still gonna work, but let's say they wanted to try a different use case. And then they have to kind of, some people uh, do that because they have to do two tests. And then let's say on the second test, I wanted to just do a negative numbers. And I have the result here of the test. And, and then I just call it two. And then it's gonna be pass as well. But it, it, it tested both. Well, let's make it fail just to show you something. Um, yeah, it's still fail. Cool. But what you can do is just going back to what I was saying, you can do something that's called a decorator uh, called, um, you have to import PyTest in this case. In the top, and then you go pytest dot mark, and then you use the parameterize. So the way it works is you have to um, open parentheses, and the arguments are. So what you're gonna pass? I usually call result. Uh, not result. I call it uh, values. Um, I think this one should be called values. Um, oh, forget about it. Values, and then you do comma, and then expected results, and then you do comma, which is another argument, and then you pass um, a list and then a tuple with what's gonna represent. It's a little bit confusing, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pass that, which is gonna be the values that I'm gonna input in the function. And then that's gonna be expected results. So that's a tuple. You can do trailing comma here. It's even recommended. And then, you can just copy that, delete. Um, and then you can pass as many as you want. 
then that's gonna run only once so and then it's gonna look much cleaner I'm just gonna delete that here and I have to pass that into the function uh, there is something wrong here no. have to pass here and then values it's gonna be here and expect the results here uh, here let's test uh yeah the problem is here yeah and then now it's gonna work Voila, so one fail. Uh, should be a minus five. There we go. So that's the mark parameterize. Um, another important thing that I'll teach you is something called fixture. So you can do it. Fixture is very good to if you want to. Um, uh, pass some data around so it's a decorator as well and then you just decorate a function that's called uh, let's say my data and you just return what you want it to return so let's say 42 and then you can uh, test that um, I'll put that something something and then you can then pass that fixture so around and you just do a assert uh, assert that my data so equals 42 and then that's gonna pass as well and then you just do that so another tip here is that there is a, a file called conf test that you can create in your uh, test directory and then what you can do and then what I usually do is I, I save all my fixture in conf test and then any um, other module inside pytest file here can refer to that fixture without importing which makes things really uh, useful and then if you do that that thing is still gonna work uh, what's happened uh. yeah I need to import my test here my, my, my bad and then it works so um, just to finalize so for example if i if i do pi test it's gonna run all my tests but sometimes you just wanted to run a specific test or module what you're gonna what you do is just do the where the file is and then it, for example if i want to do the, this whole module i just gonna do test my project it's gonna run the whole but usually i have one file to test a module and then i can i know that all my functions for that module is test on that file that's the way i do it you can do uh one file per test if you want but you have to find your way it's very flexible uh, but let's say sometimes you have you were just working one function and you just want to test that specific function and then what i do is um what you have to do is you just select the name of that the, the function you want to run and then you put column semicolon column and then you just go sorry column column and then the name of the function without the uh, parameter the bracket and then there you go you run all the tests there if you want a more verbose uh, you can put dash dash sorry dash dv and then it give you more information especially good it's when the test fail so um when the, and then you have got more data so for example if i run that uh, it passed let me just save the file that failure 
So if it, it gives you less information, if you go, uh, it gives you more information and then it tells like where it is and it prints out um, a stack trace that it's more, um, more complete. Uh, another thing that you can do um, is, for example, you can do the dash dash lf, which is last fail, and then you just run the last test of fail, and then you can do dash dash lf dash pv, uh, and then it's going to run the last failed um, in verbose mode. I think that's pretty much it for PyTest. If you know that, probably you will be able to do most of your tests in PyTest. But if you do want to know a lot about PyTest, much more than I uh, explained quickly in this video, I do recommend uh, reading this book here. It's a very good book. I have a PDF here. So it's called PyTest Testing, uh, Python Testing with PyTest from by Brian Ocken. It's a very good book. This is the first edition that I bought a few years ago, but you can get the um, second edition, which is kind of more complete and they correct some errors that was in the first edition. But this is a very good book. So I do recommend it. And that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please put in the comments below and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching again. Bye-bye.